In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I can't breathe. People all over the world today are crying out and whispering, I can't breathe. They are crying weakly and quietly in hospital beds in COVID-19 wards, surrounded by people working tirelessly to help them. The danger is real. The risks are huge. The need for wisdom is urgent. They are also crying out with the anger of racial injustice in the streets of cities in America and now in the UK as well because of the last words of a man named George Floyd, who was murdered by a police officer. The officer pressed brutally down onto his neck and George Floyd gasped out, I can't breathe, everything hurts. We keep hearing and experiencing the stories of those who cannot breathe in John's Gospel, after the resurrection, Jesus comes to the disciples. He says, peace be with you. He breathes on them. He gives them the breath of God and the breath of the Holy Spirit, life itself. Those gathering in protest right now, they are not two meters apart. They're not in hexagon formations. There are definitely more than six of them. And maybe it's not right simply to point to a crowded beach with people on holiday and say, but what about them? Or to even point to Dominic Cummings in his hypocrisy and his callousness, and indeed both those things are certainly true, and to simply say, well, the rules no longer apply, not to this group or not to that group. But this is about something else. This is a terrible and horrifying clash of the needs for justice and safety in all kinds of ways. And there's a complex and fearful situation now that we pray will give rise to the voice of God's loving compassion. Those who protest now and historically have run out of options. The process of politely asking for things seems not to get through to those who hold power. It seems that those who have been systematically had their voices taken away or minimized still have that problem and as a result, walk out into the streets to try to raise their voices together and to be with those who are also in solidarity with that cause. Those streets are places then to ask tough questions about who society values or doesn't value and why. Today, the church celebrates Pentecost. Today, we give thanks for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, justice, compassion, mercy, the gifts that bind us together as children of God and the body of Christ. The Spirit comes like wind, like fire, like the restoration of a broken heart. And when the Holy Spirit arrives, no one actually really knows what's going on. Peter has to explain that those who are inspired by God aren't drunk, but they're completely overwhelmed by the experience of new life. They cannot go back to normal. Their new normal, our new normal as Christians, is a life lived according to God's justice, mercy, and truth. That is the gift of the Spirit if we are courageous enough to truly let it in and to truly claim that space. That's not an easy life. Experiencing the power of the Spirit creates that major misunderstanding in that first instance in our scripture and continues to do so. Peter has to explain and interpret lest crowds might turn on them, which indeed sometimes also happens. Don't you see, Peter seems to ask, this is God at work. This is God's promise. This is the fulfillment of a powerful prophecy. The Spirit comes, the people are renewed, and God says, as God says in the prophet Joel's text, my people shall never be ashamed. Shame is what society does to the oppressed 
the poor, the vulnerable, those who are not white, those who are not straight, and the list goes on. God's promise in the Holy Spirit says that there will be no more shame. All are God's beloved. Every life matters. Black lives matter. That is why people are raising their voices in the memory of George Floyd and too many lost lives, filling the air with the phrase, I can't breathe. This man didn't have to die. This man should not have died. Now he rests in the arms of Jesus as God's beloved. We're in a terrifying time. 2020 has been marked by so much suffering already. Those who are especially vulnerable mentally, physically, and spiritually are bearing so much, too much. And it is known that for complex reasons of systemic racist inequality, higher numbers of BAME people are dying of COVID-19. This virus exposes injustice. I hope we listen. I hope our leaders listen and act. We raise our voices with them too, in the memory of every single precious person who has died. I can't breathe. The black theologian Robert Beckford speaks about the equality of engagement, the quality of engagement, in this way. We'll visit men in prison, but we won't tackle the criminal justice system, how race in sentencing works against black people, or challenge the media for its persistent criminalizing of black youth. I think, he says, that is shortchanging the community and shortchanging the gospel. Another Christian leader says this, Jesus was highly political. He told the rich that unlike the poor who were blessed, they would face woes. He spoke harsh words to leaders of the nations when they were uncaring of the needy. He did this because God cares for those in need. That means action and words. These are not the words of Martin Luther King Jr but of Archbishop Justin Wilby. Excellent. Let's see this in action. To be Christian is to be in solidarity with the most vulnerable, the most rejected, the most oppressed. It is to be in solidarity with those who cry out, I can't breathe. And here with another challenge is Jim Bear Jacobs this weekend, a white priest from the Council of Churches in Minnesota. He says, when white people cry for peace, it is too often an appeal to silence black anger and make room for white comfort. We don't need peace. We don't need things to return to normal. Normal is what got us here. We need leadership that will bravely face the truth of our white supremacist society and commit to change it. Jacob's words are really hard ones because this is a hard truth. We are taught every day what love is. We are invited by our gospel, by the Holy Spirit, to make space for everyone's voice if we dare to do so and if power can be yielded. Because we're also taught every day what injustice is, and it's not difficult to see, and it's essential to respond. At Pentecost, we say that the Spirit has come, that God's Spirit is with us. The Spirit flows through the voices of justice, pushing like air, like wind, like fire, like hope. And we need that breath of God more than ever. Those of us who can breathe must raise our voices with those who are having trouble breathing, who are not heard, who are breathless. Our oxygen can be used to speak truth to power. I pray it does for the liberation of those in urgent and breathless need. For Jesus' sake. Amen. <laughs>